What is going on YouTube? What is going on Booster Mom? Today guys, today we're gonna talk about the things to look out for when you are going to buy an E9X M3 with the X65 in it. You guys know how much I love this car if you've been following the channel. If you are new here, I've had, this is my third one. Absolutely love them. I've got videos on the why I think you should buy one, the things I love, the things I hate. But today's video, we're gonna talk about what to look out for because there are a good deal of things that you wanna pay attention to when you are gonna get an M3 and you wanna consider before you go ahead and buy one. You don't wanna be surprised by some of this stuff. In the past, I've been surprised and it's just not a fun experience and I want you guys to avoid some of those mistakes and some of the downfalls that this car can have. As good as this car is there might be some things that you guys are not aware of that can sneak up on you with this car and it's good to know about them beforehand that way you don't end up with any surprises that end up costing you a lot of money or tainting your thoughts on this car or your your love for this car. So with that guys let's go ahead and we're going to get right into it. So the first thing on the list to watch out for is going to be the valve covers. Now I will say these tend to go bad the last two M3s I've had so this one and the one before it both had leaking valve covers um luckily neither one had to be completely replaced they could be reconditioned and it could work but sometimes they do have to be completely completely replaced which makes that service more even more expensive and more labor intensive but just to give you guys an idea what it is is it's this right here so you'll see this start to leak oil and seep oil through here it'll begin to build up around this seal and all the way down and it's honestly it's kind of nice because you can at least see this one. Some of the other stuff with this car, you can't just flat out see unless you're under the car or unless you completely take part of the, the, the car apart. But this, you can see it. So if you are looking for an M3, you can, you know, you're at a dealership or you're meeting with a private party. That's a big, big thing I would look for is to make sure that these aren't leaking because it's anywhere from like 400 to over, I think $1,200 to have them reconditioned all the way up to being completely replaced, including the labor. It's just something that can end up costing you a lot of money really quick. and something that's avoidable because you can honestly, because like I said, you can just see it. Like you can usually just see it unless they've cleaned it up really well, but same thing, have a PPI done, make sure that that is not leaking because if it is, you're gonna end up costing yourself money really quick. Another thing I actually almost forgot to mention that's really important guys, is and you, and you want to have it taken care of is there's actually an airbag recall out on this car so there is an issue with the airbag i believe it's a piece can essentially explode and become like fatal if you if you don't have the airbags replaced so there's a recall on all m3s e9x m3s they all have a recall check to see if the recall is done if it's not done see if the dealer or you're getting it from will do it or if you're giving it from a private party see if they can get it done beforehand i'm pretty sure the time has expired to go get that done so just something if you are going to get the car and it doesn't have that recall done just for your safety uh, you want to make sure that you go and you pay to have that done definitely calculate that into your cost of the car and before you buy the car just know that your car might have an open recall on the airbag that needs to be taken care of because you obviously like that that's that's very much worth doing because you don't want your airbag that's supposed to save your life to end up killing you that sounds terrible and we don't want that at all all right so because the rest of this isn't necessarily stuff i can just point out to you under on the car without getting under it or like i said taking the car apart let's actually get in the car i'm gonna set up the gopro and we'll just talk through some of those things how much they cost and ways to like avoid them and look out for them and how you guys can ultimately use that to help yourselves when you are looking for one of these cars the first thing with the car is the rod bearings so this is well known I've done a video on doing them on this car. I've done rod bearings on my last two M3s. The other one before that, I just didn't have it long enough to do them. And it really is, it's the Achilles heel. It's And, and people are gonna try to tell you it's not. And I said this before, there, it's an issue. It is a real, real problem. It's not made up and it's not fake. So finding a car that's already got them done, that's a, it's essentially like a $2,000 to $2,800 service, depending on where you live, including parts. Assuming you can't do it yourself. If you can do it yourself, I think it's like $800 to $1,200 uh, just for the parts alone. But it's you know that's it's over $2,000 pretty much that you're looking at no matter what. So that's like a good, good deal of money that you're gonna be spending like maybe not right out the gate if you get a super low mile car, but as those miles continue to climb or if you are buying a car that's around that 50, 60, 70, 80,000 mile range, like you're gonna wanna do them. So you have to consider that you might get a car right now for uh, like a high mileage one for 20 grand, but if you immediately need to do rod bearings, it's gonna end up costing you $22,000, $2,300 or $23,000 right off the bat, um, including having to get the rod bearings done. So. If you can find an example that's got a rod, the rod bearings already done, you're gonna save yourself one like time in the shop where you could be enjoying the car, and you're gonna save yourself, you know, two thousand dollars. If you guys are gonna get an M3 that's got a DCT, you basically 
got two options, six speed or DCT. Um, honestly, I've actually had both. It's probably a good time. The six speed's really fun. Not a big fan of the actual like shifter itself, but you can get the M5 shift knob and I've heard that makes a lot of difference. And if you're not in a place that's got a ton of traffic, it's fine. It's really, really fun with the uh, six speed, but the car's DCT is absolutely amazing. I love it, especially when the car was supercharged. It just flies through the gears. It's so much fun. It's, it's just great. Like, I mean, shifts, everything are amazing. So the DCT, if you are gonna get one with the DCT, one thing that tends to happen and you're gonna wanna look for before you, before you commit to buying a car is the DCT pan tends to leak. So once the car, once you get into the car, you'll see there's a pan. That area can leak and it begins leaking the transmission fluid. And the issue with it is you can't just order like repair just one little piece or one seal or one line you actually have to get an entirely new pan and that alone is that's like 650 to 750 for the service on that because you have to add fluids and all of that too so something to really pay attention for is if you're gonna get one and you've got a dct make sure you're getting that pan looked at because i didn't realize like i didn't even think about it for some reason when i got this car this car has the leak now it's not always something you have to immediately replace but eventually it will have to be replaced as the leak continues to get worse and worse depending on how bad the leak is so something to pay attention to another thing on this car that i feel like i don't see get talked about that often or i guess i haven't seen talked about in videos is the under tray so there's this felt under piece and i'll show you guys a, a video of it but this thing tends to come off and it tends to get up beat up pretty bad it's not very durable i'm not quite sure why they put that under there rather than like a plastic or, or aluminum or some sort of piece that i, I think would make way more sense and that you're seeing like people like emporium uh th those guys over there have done where they've made a custom one that is more durable protects against scrapes and all of that but that felt piece will come off a replacement one for them is i think 400 450 bucks something like that from emporium it's and that's that is durable but just something you guys should know is like that that felt piece will eventually as time goes on continue to wear and they just need to be replaced so something to keep in mind when you're looking at these cars is like I don't think it gets talked about enough, but will will need to be replaced at, at some point. So another thing on this car that is actually like pretty common and tends to go on most of them is the throttle actuators. The They are basically, it's like a little plastic piece in there that goes bad, it breaks. That service is like 800 to $1,200 depending on your shop. Um, I know that one compared to like rod bearings and the pan, the DCT pan and all that is actually a little bit easier to do on your own. I know Booster Trap did that and he actually sent his out and it was like ended up being like 400 to 600 dollars just with parts but he did the service himself and it took him like two or three hours um and his first time doing it so that one you could do on your own but another thing that will 100 percent throw your car into limp mode and is pretty common with these m3s so you're going to want to watch out for that because once again you don't want to get the car and then have all this stuff going wrong with it have no idea what it is the next thing that i would really like it's something small but a lot of things will throw this car not like a lot of things will throw this car into limp mode kind of so and it's like small things like i've had you know vacuum sensors. i've had sensors go bad and it has thrown this car into limp mode and it's like one of those things where you start freaking out because you're like oh my god what is it but the car like will completely go into limp mode and it ends up being like a 40 dollar part but i've noticed there's like a lot of small things on this car that will do that but it seems to always happen at the like most inconvenient times like when you're in traffic on your way to work or doing something like that is when those things seem to go out and they are like they're small but you still have to get them fixed you still have to diagnose it and it, it's kind of like a process so this car fingers crossed hasn't had much of that but I, I really 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 would watch out for that make sure you have a tool with you um, if you're gonna get one of these cars or any BMW, honestly, or any car, just have a diagnostics tool in the car that you always keep in it. There's a lot of ones you can get on Amazon that use Bluetooth and an app, and it'll tell you what's going on with the car if you don't wanna go buy a regular one. But just having it in the car makes a big difference when you are like gonna get something small like that. That way you know, okay, yes, I need to like, I can just reset the car and uh, it'll clear the codes and I'm good to go. Or no, hold on, we might actually have an issue here. Uh, but I've noticed that like, a lot of the times like it's been smaller things that have kicked my car into limp mode and it ends up being like 40 bucks but it's still like the whole process is kind of a kind of a pain in the ass now if you're watching this and it's your you know your first time watching a video on m3 or thinking about buying an m3 you might be like oh man that kind of sounds like a lot of stuff like rod bearings throttle actuators valve cover dct pan 
Th these are just common things, right? And if you can find a car that's got them done, great, awesome. If you find a car that you really like that doesn't have them done, don't let it scare you away from the car. Have an inspection done, have a list of things, get a total from the shop. Because if you have a shop that's like, yeah, it's gonna cause, you know, you got you need to have, um, you got a valve cover gasket leak and a DCT pan leak. There's, you know, $1,500 to $1,800 that you're gonna have to get done. Use that when negotiating the car. Like it's still gonna, the car's fine. Like this car needed rod bearings, it needed valve cover gas, it needed DCT pan. The only thing it didn't need was throttle actuators. Um, and it, you know, I, I used that when I was negotiating the car, so I got a good price. It was like $19,000 out the door with everything. So it's like, use those things. Don't be afraid of the car. And honestly guys, I know that I said like, there's little things that'll happen. They don't have, I, I just knock on wood, but you know, it, the car is fairly reliable outside of that. And once you do the preventative maintenance, the car's great. I mean, you're gonna get an amazing car that's got a really fun transmission either way. I, I, I've talked about this, you know, end on end on why you should buy one. Honestly, if you wanna understand why, I've got an entire video on that. I'll put the link to that here too. And I'll put it at the end so you guys can watch that and see the reasons why you should buy this car. But if you are looking, those are the things that I would really, really watch out for and things to consider when buying an E9X M3 with the X65 motor in it. Only V8 M3 ever, last V8 M3 ever, and in my opinion, the last great M3. The F80s are good. I don't think they're great because the sound I don't think is great, but that's a whole different video. That's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, as always, if you want to join the Boost Mob, you enjoyed today's video, and you want to see more content, please subscribe, like, comment, share, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.